Do you think you understand the depths of human cruelty? Well, just wait until you hear about the punishments people faced if they were even suspected of witchcraft. This video is not for the faint of heart, so let's dive right in. Starting off, we are talking about being burned at the stake. This takes the top spot for the most horrifying spectacle during the witch trials, especially across continental Europe. A person, often a woman, accused of witchcraft is tied up to a huge wooden stake in the center of town. Then, with the whole community watching, they are set ablaze. The air fills with smoke and the crackling sound of fire, while the accused suffers a terrifying and painful death. This brutal method wasn't just about punishing the supposed witch, it was a public show designed to scare anyone else who might even think about dabbling in witchcraft. The message was loud and clear. Witchcraft, or even the rumor of it, could lead to a fiery and frightful end. This grim spectacle underscores just how deep the fear of witch witchcraft ran through societies back then, where even a whisper or a suspicion could land you tied to that fatal stake. Next up we are talking about hanging. This was a go-to method for dealing with witches in colonial America, especially during the infamous Salem witch trials. It wasn't as flashy as burning at the stake, but it got the grim job done. It would go a little something like a crowd gathered in the early morning mist, the ominous creaks of the gallows filling the air, the accused again often and women would stand on a shaky platform, ropes around their neck as the accusations of witchcraft that sealed their fate were read aloud. Once the platform was kicked away or dropped, it was game over. The idea was to serve as a warning to anyone else who might think about dabbling in the supernatural. Hanging was considered a bit more humane and was the preferred method in the English colonies, reflecting their legal traditions and perhaps a bit of their sensibilities about public spectacles. I don't know, we're still hanging people for witchcraft, so I'm not sure. It made it seem like they were like, oh, we'll just hang them instead, instead of burning them. It's all the same. Really? All right, next up on our list, we are talking about pressing. Pressing was one seriously harsh method to squeeze a confession out of someone suspected of witchcraft, and it was just as brutal as it sounds. Imagine you're lying down, helpless, while heavy stones are gradually piled onto your chest, slowly crushing you. This nightmare was a reality for some during the witch trials, most notably for Giles Corey during the Salem witch trials. Corey was an elderly man accused of witchcraft, and instead of giving in, he endured this extreme torment without confessing. With each stone added, he famously defied his accusers with the words, more weight. Sadly, he didn't survive the ordeal, but his story became a chilling example of just how far the madness of witch trials could go. Next we are talking about the strapadoo. This sounds like something straight out of a medieval action movie, but sadly it was all too real during the witch trials. Imagine being tied up with your hands behind your back, then hoisted into the air by your wrists with just a rope. Just when you think it can't get any worse, you're suddenly dropped, but not all the way to the ground. This jarring stop wasn't just startling, it often dislocated shoulders and caused agonizing pain. It was a very brutal method designed to encourage confessions from accused witches, playing on the sheer terror and intense physical agony of the ordeal. This torment wasn't just about punishment, it was also also about making a spectacle of the power to coerce and control, demonstrating what could happen if you stepped out of line. That like, sometimes I sleep wrong and my shoulder hurts, like I can't even imagine that, oh my god. Next up we are talking about ducking or stooling. Imagine being tied to a chair and dunked into a freezing cold river. Sounds like a bit of a twisted game, right? Well, back during the witch trials, this was a serious business called ducking or stooling. The idea was bizarrely simple, tie up the accused witch, dunk them into water, and then see what happens. Water was considered pure, so if you floated, it meant that the water didn't want you. You were guilty of witchcraft. Sink and you're innocent, but there's also a catch, sinking often meant drowning. So not exactly a win-win situation. This method was as illogical as it was harsh, leading to many tragic deaths from drowning or dying of exposure after the ordeal. It is a chilling reminder of how fear and superstition can override basic humanity. Next we are talking about pricking or scratching. This might sound like more of a minor nuisance, but during the witch trials, they took on quite a sinister twist. Witch hunters armed with sharp needles would jab at the skin of the 
those accused of witchcraft searching for the so called Devil's Mark. This mark was supposedly a telltale sign of a witch, an area that wouldn't bleed or hurt no matter how much it was poked or prodded. You can imagine how this method was ripe for exploitation. Basically, if the witch hunter decided not to see blood or pain, then there wasn't any. This subjectivity and potential for manipulation in this practice were through the roof. It turned a simple needle into a tool of terror, making it one of the many dubious and cruel techniques used to root out supposed witches. Next we are talking about forced waking. Forced waking was a particularly nasty method used during the witch trials to squeeze confessions out of the accused. Here's how it went down. The suspected witches were kept awake for days on end because apparently the folks running the show believed that a lack of sleep could make anyone spill their darkest secrets. Sounds like a nightmare, right? Well, it gets worse. The extreme sleep deprivation led to hallucinations, making the accused see and hear things that weren't there, which often pushed them to make false confessions just to get some rest. This brutal tactic was not only incredibly cruel, but also super effective at getting confessions, though these confessions were about as reliable as a chocolate teapot. Next we are talking about the witch's bridal, or the scold's bridal. This sounds like a medieval torture chamber and, well, it kind of was. This terrifying contraption was like the ultimate muzzle made entirely of iron that clamped around the head. But the real kicker was the bridle bit that jammed into the mouth and pressed down on the tongue. Why? Well, to keep the accused from speaking out during their trial or execution. Imagine trying to plead your case or even scream with that thing in your mouth. No chance. It was a harsh way to silence someone, literally stifling their last words and adding a dose of humiliation to their punishment. This device wasn't just about physical restraint, it was a tool for mental and emotional torment, ensuring the accused felt powerless and isolated right up until the end. Absolutely horrible. Next we are talking about thumb screws. Just gonna let you picture what you think that is for a second. Thumb screws were as nasty as they sound and a real nightmare during the witch trials. These wicked little devices were all about bringing the pain in a big way. Imagine having your thumbs locked into a small metal vise that slowly tightened around them. As the screws turned, the pressure mounted, mercilessly crushing the thumbs to coax out confessions. It was an absolutely brutal technique based on the belief that enough pain could make anyone spill their darkest secrets whether they were true or not. Used frequently by witch hunters, this torment device was a terrifyingly effective tool in their arsenal to extract confessions from the accused, often leading them to admit to just about anything to make the agony stop. It is definitely a chilling reminder of just how far fear and superstition can push humanity in its darker hours. And finally on this list we are talking about public humiliation. This was a go-to method during the witch trials and it was just as nasty as it sounds. Imagine being accused of witchcraft and then being dragged through the streets where everyone you know could hurl insults or worse, stones. But it didn't stop there. Accused witches were often locked into stocks or pillories in the town square, left there for hours or sometimes even days. This wasn't just about the punishment, it was a full on community spectacle. People would gather around throwing anything from rotten veggies to harsh words, making the accused the center of a very grim kind of attention. It was a brutal way to remind everyone of the consequences of stepping out of line, and it reinforced community norms in the harshest ways imaginable. In those days, public opinion could be more dangerous than the actual authorities. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozolowski, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye. More. All right. I just said, and I'll see you again soon. Who knew it would be this soon? Literally 30 seconds later. Okay. Next, we're talking about the strapado. 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 <laughs> I don't know.